Welcome, everybody, to the Arizona News Show. We are missing Ruby today. I guess she's driving back from what, Flagstaff? She's in flag right now. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm your host, Rick McCollum. We've got Pat McMasters with Price Mortgage. And today, Jackie Smith with Century Arizona Foothills, Century 21 Arizona Foothills. And we have a special <laughs> guest that we're going to bring on. You have asked us before if we could bring on an investor, and we found one of the best. So we're all giddy now, and we're excited. So we can get this show started. And the first thing I want to show you is I want to share some data on where we're at today because things are changing rapidly. And But I am going to tell you, um, if you're waiting for a 30% crash this summer, it ain't happening. And I'll show you why. So here we are at 12,777. We're actually over 13,000 now. This gets updated on, on Saturday afternoons by the Cromford Report. But we're, we're going to be above um, 20, let's see, this is 2019 levels by, by next week, and then getting up to 2018. And keep in mind, those inventory levels used to be considered pretty painstakingly low too. But look at last year, right? 5,594. So we're definitely coming up at a really fast clip. And you can see that the Crawford market index has fallen like a rock. We're almost at a balanced market and should be by... Um, probably middle of July from what we look at. And, that, and we're cheering that as good news for buyers. Um, sellers have to be more realistic in their prices. But then I looked at the Cromford Market Index in three cities. I looked at Queen Creek. They're at 132. And I pulled up um, Maricopa when I can follow my alphabet here. And they are sitting at 134. And then I pulled up Buckeye. The reason I concentrated on these three to look at today was that's where all the builder activity is is the biggest. And they're starting to take their homes, put them on the market. And so put them on the MLS. So that's where it's showing up. Um, this is the Cromford Market Indicator, indicator is a prediction of future annual price appreciation. It doesn't quite tell the story. I hoped it would, but this one does. Take a look at this. This is our monthly average sales price today. $599,000. Now, you want prices to come down to $350,000 by this summer. That's going to have to happen in a few weeks. So are you going to go from here down to here in four weeks? Nope. So all these crasher videos that I see out there that say we're going to be down 30 and 40%, it's not mathematically possible unless North Korea bombs Litchfield and all the banks close on Monday. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Let's hope not. And I haven't seen any of that. So, Pat, what are you seeing in the mortgage arena out there? Any changes this week? It looked to me like it was kind of same old, same old. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing uh, it's you know, the 10 year close at 3.17. It's kind of the same old, same old now. I mean, certainly we've seen this is the chart. This is going back to 2019. So, we saw the lows. And we, obviously, we saw this run up, but um, you know, Barry Habib was saying that there's three uh, key players: Powell, this Brainerd, the, the Fed. You know, they're they're saying that basically this guy from Williams from the Fed said that um, they expect you know uh, growth to slow, but they do not see a recession. I, I once again, I'm gonna just I'm gonna go back to the last couple of years. They said transitory. I don't believe anything that comes out of this the Fed. You know, some of these people's mouths. We are in a recession. Um, like I said, the Fed will never admit it. But um, there is a neutral rate. Basically, the federal funds rate right now is at one and a half. And the core inflation rate is around 4.9. You know, the PCE, the per personal consumption expenditures, that's kind of a takes out food and gas. And the reason they do that, actually, is because they cannot, the feds feel like they cannot control food and gas. That's one reason yeah, why they take that. They, they take that number out. I could never understand that, but that's basically what, what they do. But yeah, it doesn't they, make they, any sense to me. I mean, he's trying to pull down inflation. So, I mean, they, I get it. He doesn't have any control over it, but does that mean we shouldn't count it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. I mean, it's, it, it's, yeah, there's, I could use some analogies, but uh, I'm not going to keep it to myself. But, um, you know, the, the federal funds rate, obviously they expected to move up to around three, three and a half percent. So that's, yeah, that's two points from here. And uh, bottom line is, is that they, um, you know, inventories have been increasing. And uh, this one gentleman, David Rosenberg, says that, you know, we're headed for a recession. We're in a recession. 
he believes down the road we're going to see the 10-year Treasury uh, get to 1.125 again, um, which is kind of in, in line with what Barry Habib says, that we'll eventually see you know, rates back off. And I, I think we're, once again, we're just in this transition period. When I say transition period, you have to start looking at, I mean, uh, like I said, I started to realize this, you have to look at economic periods in the 12 to 18 month uh, gap versus, you know, one or two weeks or one month. We're in this, we're in this rising rate environment. And I think by, he's saying by, you know, end of this year, beginning of next year, we're going to see rates ease a little bit. I think we will. And, you know, middle to end of next year is when, you're going to see them come back down. But until then, um, it's I mean, now, once again, I said this the last couple of podcasts, last or less interviews, is that um, the cat is out of the bag with inflation, with all this news. So now it's like, okay, how bad is it going to be? Because like I said, before we were all always denying ourselves the fact that we were in this, but now we know we're in the storm. So once the clouds get by us, I think things will settle down. Well, and I think that's also a good time here to go ahead and go back to the spreadsheet that you can put in your purchase price. You can put in the interest rate and you'll see what your payment is. Then you can play around with these price changes over here. It's going to go down 30%. Mortgage is going to go up to eight. It's going to go up 5%. Mortgages are still at six. And you can play with that and you can figure out your own scenarios. And then when you do that, um, you'll know what fits best for you. But then you also have to keep in mind that, you know, you're having a hard time qualifying right now. If you're waiting for the price to go down and interest rates come up, are you still going to qualify? Probably, probably not. So uh, I'll email that to you. Just shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com and we'll get that out to you. We won't spam you. I think I sent out 50 so far. Um, it's quite a, quite a deal. A great tool. You, um, Ruby is on the road and you've been very instrumental in helping us find this great investor. Can you introduce her for us? I would absolutely love to. So a few years ago, actually a couple of years ago, um, and I think I mentioned to you before, Rick, I do wholesaling and uh, actually started doing wholesaling when a lot of people didn't know what it was. Back right after the crash, we were working with a lot of huge investors from Canada and we could not buy properties quick enough with our acquisition department. And so we started a wholesale team and taught wholesale for numerous years. And so I've always loved doing that. I, I love the wholesale aspect of it because it's typically somebody really in need. So normally they're desperate sellers that need a solution. And so a couple of years ago, we had a house that was part of an estate sale and we were helping uh, the son of the mother who passed away. And there was numerous different investors interested. It was a hot little area in Scottsdale. And Rahima actually ended up being the end buyer for this. And we just hit it off. I, I think she's amazing. She is one of the most knowledgeable women I've ever met. She is driven. And I aspire to be her someday, actually. Well, so there's my introduction. <laughs> I think your microphone is off, Rahima. But I'm um, I'm mute your There we go. Your, Jackie, that's that's quite a that's quite an introduction. Thank you. If it if it my if pleasure. Come out you. You know, I I always I don't always I'm not always able to take my calls, but when when Jackie calls, I always take the call. Thank you, <laughs> and and thank you for being on the show. I was so excited when you said yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Yeah, we've had a lot of requests from people saying, "Can you can you you keep talking about investors? Can you bring one on and and what is their take on the market?" And so. Um, what's, I guess probably two, two phases of my question. One is, you know, what's changed for you the past 60 days and, um, how do you change strategy in a, in a market like we, we have today? Sure. Um, I mean, it's definitely houses are taking longer to sell. There's, there's no doubt. It used to be, you could throw a house on the market and you'd expect it to be sold uh, within, within the week it was going to be sold and usually above list. Um, that's not happening anymore. But I think that this is going to stop some of the flippers that are out there buying uh, properties and then doing very little to improve them and then selling them for an exorbitant price. I think consumers are getting smarter mm -hmm. and I think they're going to be willing to just take on a house for the sake of taking on a house that they know nothing happened and this guy's literally walking away with $70,000, $80,000 of profit. So... Um Lipstick on a pig with uh, yeah. paint and uh, stuff. That's not going to work yeah. anymore. I don't, 
think it's going to work. No, I think I think that this is kind of happening in conjunction with the changing face of the American home buyer, right? Because the American home buyer is no longer, you know, a mother, a father, and 2.1 kids. It's that's not it anymore. It's a mother, a father, an aging parent, an adult child who may or may not be married. And everybody's coming together because housing has become so expensive that if they don't live together, there's somebody's living in their car. Mm -hmm. so I think as an investor, what we've done is we've changed the way we, we renovate a house. We redevelop that space so that we're probably going to add an extra bedroom and bathroom. We're looking at any opportunities to add additional dwelling units, extra kitchen suites. You know, we're, we're looking at, oh, there's, a, there's an old tool shed or an old tool shop in the back where a regular flipper will be like, oh, we'll just make that a patio. Forget the no. patio. Let's try to build a hallway so that we can attach the main house to this and let's add a bedroom and bathroom. Let's use as much square footage. Let's push the building envelope. You know, car garages are now a luxury. If we can turn them into a suite, you turn them into a suite. Pools are an unneeded luxury where if you can fill it in and build a casita, you fill it in and build a casita because space is what we need. Space, living space is what uh, Americans need now. So if you're an investor and you're doing this as a living and you're not seeing that, you're not, you're not, that's not, it's not resonating in your brain, then your, your chances are your flips aren't going to sell. That's oh. interesting. That's a great strategy. I, I think that's going to grow, don't you? As yeah. the interest rates, it, absolutely. Yeah. Don't well, complain. You, you have to be able to pivot. I mean, if there's if there's one thing I've learned doing this, uh, and we flip anywhere from six to you know eight houses every three months, so we're all, we're constantly working on a house, and we don't we our strategy is never to put lipstick on a pig. Our strategy yeah. is to completely change that house, change the the bed bath count, change everything about it, and we look Talk. at it like how many families can live here. Yeah, mm -hmm. to optimize it the best you can. Are you still doing all price points? Oh, yeah, absolutely. In all areas, we're going anywhere from Maryvale to Avondale up to Gilbert's, you know, all the way through. We we don't, uh, we take the deal where the deal is. I mean, so you think about buyers, it. Are buyers on their last leg then? I don't know. I mean, our strategy has usually been, we, we don't even take an investor we don't take an offer from an investor until at least a week on market. Good. We'll, Good we'd rather give it to a home buyer um, before we'll give it to an investor. And I know they're going to come in awesome. and they're going to come in a little bit higher, but that it, I mean, we're okay. We've, we, we have a, a buffer period to be able to hold the house for an extra 30 days. So a buyer can buy it. That's fantastic. An end, an end user can buy it. Not, you yeah. know, not my buyer. Yeah. You're doing something for the community. Right, and we're we're absolutely building so that people can bring in an aging parent, yeah. bring in a you know a daughter and son-in-law who recently got evicted because they were renting for ten years, never thought to buy a house, and now their landlord decided to sell their house because he's getting two hundred thousand dollars higher than what he paid for it. Yeah, no, it's, I'm cer starting to see see a lot of demand for that where people you know the aging population and you know if you got a five you know six hundred thousand dollar home okay the average median you know price you know Home, an average home now and your 650 700 is a bat of an eye you know for the most part the average person cannot do that but if you add in say an aging parent that gets social a lot of people are on, you know their, their parents are on social security they're getting two thousand dollars a month i'm seeing posts on gilbert and facebook like i feel bad for these uh aging people because they're like i'm paying fourteen hundred dollars a month in rent my social security is nineteen hundred but now my rent's going up to seventeen eight they're right. they're screwed they're i mean screwed. and so I mean, excuse my French, but there it's just that it's a, you could see it. You could see it happening. Well, that's just it. I mean, in, in America, in most of the world, most of the world. Families live together. Families <laughs> live together. In America, there was this big push for independence and everybody had home ownership, right? And then home ownership declined. The millennials stopped buying houses or didn't buy houses. And people lost their house. So then they were, became renters. And so now they're, they're in that same spot where they need to combine their their resources in order to have a yep. roof over their heads. And yet, on top of it, just a one added note, they get built-in babysitters. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, you've got a family, you know, working family, the mom and dad, you know, the retired parents, yep. you know, they're, I think, I think this economy and everything's going such that people are trying to, like you said, rethink a lot of things. And I think that just, you know, combining resources so they can afford something, they can go to work, you know, they're, the uh, uh, babysitters. I mean, the, the mom and dad can watch the kids for six hours while I go to work. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah, there's a myriad of different, you know, well, I lived, I lived with my mother-in-law um, and she was 80 and it was a hoot. I mean, she was, <laughs> it, it, it was great because she was so doggone funny and uh, she was a rabid Cardinals football fan and she would scream at the TV, you know, and she only knew one play, you know, uh, throw to Fitzgerald. And so, <laughs> Scream and she would cuss and we bought this big tv and i said you know that's a smart tv she goes well what's that mean i go well the nfl's actually figured out how to integrate the technology to where not only can they hear the fans oh my in god the stadium, <laughs> but they can hear us and she just went oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I said, nah, I'm kidding. But <laughs> that's but funny. Living with uh, you know, I mean, I I think it was easier living with my mother-in-law who was 80 than I ever would have been living with my own mom. You know? <laughs> but I can understand the uh you know the advantage yes. of the even like what Pat said, you know, just for babysitting purposes. But what what other trends are you seeing in and how do you see um mm -hmm. I don't predict going out a, a year so do you see much movement with investors that you interact with that feel like they need to start unloading some inventory now? You mean people that have been buying and holding? Yeah. I don't think they're going to unload. I think they're getting rents and they're happy with the rate of return. I don't think there's any incentive for them to unload, especially now. Yeah, because there's a feeling that that's going to happen, but it doesn't mathematically look like that. It doesn't make sense. No, I don't think it makes sense mathematically. I think people... People worry, right? I mean, literally, what did you say? It's been, what, four weeks since we saw this decline? Yeah, yeah. A yeah. month? A month. I mean, usually you put a house on the market, you don't expect any kind of offers for another month. Maybe two. We're, yeah. We have become a society of instantaneous gratification, yep. right? We only yeah. we have to limit our Instagram posts to like six seconds now because that's, that's all the time our attention span has. So it's like, yeah. oh, my God, the house has been on the market for six seconds. It didn't sell. There's a problem. Everything's yeah. cracked. That's not the case. I think um, uh, this will price a lot of investors out, right? Because of the buy-in now to buy a house in St. Maryville, where you could used to be able to buy a house for 20 grand when I got here in 2012 to 200 grand. I remember my brother and I flipped a house in Maryville. We were probably one of the first ones to get a quarter of a million bucks for a house in Maryville. We sold it. That was, wow. our that was you know, eight years ago. We just sold one for half a million in Maryville. Oh, so yeah. Maryville is growing. Um, I think that people will have to rethink all of their strategies when you're flipping a house. I think you have, I think a lot of the novice are going to step back and say, ah, maybe this isn't for me. This kind of gives me a stomach ache. And those yeah. that really are a little bit more experienced will stick with it because we mm -hmm. are used to ups and downs. We know that the right. market is cyclical. We knew that when rates were down, they were going to come up. And we know when rates are up, they're going to come down. That's that's experience. Everything's got cycles. Everything's yeah. got cycles. So tr so to, to be um, to be short sighted and say, "Oh my God, the world is crashing," is is just it. That's short sighted, guys. This is just part of a cycle. Well, you've just Absolutely. eliminated half the YouTubers out there, then. Oh no. <laughs> No, all the crashers, all, all the people that are the YouTubers crash, are our crash, friends. Crash, crash. Come on, yeah, yeah, the crashers. No, we, yeah. Love we love you. If we, if you didn't subscribe, then what would what would we do on right. our? Yeah, on our we're just trying. But it's nice that we're trying. We're with a group of people that are actually just trying. You know, like Rick and I were talking about. There's some you know people out there that just try to create hype just to get clicks, so mm -hmm. they can get you know they can get their you know their you know million subscribers. You sure. know, we're we're kind of plain Jane. Yeah, hype gives me a stomachache. I'm not into hype. I like <laughs> no. it nice and steady. I, I just appreciate the format because you can go out and uh, and find anything you want. You know, I need to replace a radiator in my truck, and I can find the video for that. I can uh, YouTube's my education. So when we started to, you know, we were told to stay home in March of 2020. Right. I thought real estate was doomed. So I thought, well. 
I'm just going to update people on the numbers I'm seeing. And so um, I felt like there would be certain indicators that we would see if indeed, you know, real estate was going to take a turn in the wrong direction. But what I didn't see coming was all of this help from the treasury. Right. That there would be all these, you know, stimulus checks and people would save their money. And then I would, I didn't see rates coming down where they were. So, but the only reason I stayed on top of that was I forced myself to, do weekly, if not daily, updates on on YouTube. So it helps both of us. And uh, but it's um, I could get highly negative and get ten times the views I have now. So. Yeah, right. right. But I don't think that would resonate with you. Hey, no, I don't think I'd enjoy Rahima? it. Rahima. Yes, sir. I got, I got a question. Um, if somebody's you know thinking about doing this, let's say you know just for informational purposes. Um, do you find the permitting process to be uh, quite art, you know, <laughs> arduous? And I mean, what what is it? If somebody's thinking about Joe and Mary Smith or thing, I'm thinking of putting an ADU. You know, what what's that kind of look like for the average Joe? It's not easy, it, no. it, it, at all. No, I think most of the ADUs are going to probably be unpermitted in uh, in Maricopa County. I don't think that people will go through the whole process of a separate uh, meter, a separate address, a separate mailbox. I think that that process is so arduous and cities will, it, they're not going to make it easy. I mean, just a basic permit for a basic remodel right now is taking months longer than it should have taken. Is it expensive or what's the kind of, the, I mean, it's, cost wise? It's not, even, it's not even the cost of the permit. I mean, $2,000 when you're doing a renovation project the average renovation project right now is 80, 80 grand for a 3-2. Like it's not like, you know, it used to be, oh, I could get this house fixed up in $20,000. That's not the case. So two grand on an $80,000 budget is pocket change. It's well, not. What, it's what changed? Time. Because the city of Phoenix, when we were coming out of the great, uh, you know, crash there, they made a really big effort to shorten the permit process for a while. They, they had a goal of doing it within 10 days. Oh, um, my God. I, I missed that 10 days. Because I yeah. think it might have only happened for one 10 day period because it hasn't <laughs> happened at all. Um, I think they're probably understaffed. I think people are still working out of home. And, you know, when you work out of the house, it's like, oh, I'll get to that when I finish walking the dog or after I've, you know, had a drink or maybe I need to take a nap now. <laughs> nobody's watching. So it takes longer to get things processed. There's, you can't walk into the city and sit down and speak to somebody without an appointment now. You used, and to, you used to be able to. I used yeah. to pack lunch and say, okay, I'm going to spend my day at the city today, but you can't. You have to wait for this appointment and the appointment might be three weeks away. So, you know, that whole system is so arduous. And then to, to actually permit these ADUs takes a special type of property and not all of them are going to have that. So maybe you're not going to be able to have a separate meter on your ADU, but it's still going to be a source of income for you if it's not something that your family is going to live in. Oh, wow, that's, that's interesting. We could probably do a whole whole show on that. I think oh, yeah. we'll do a whole show on how to pivot in construction, right? Because you walk in with an idea and then you, you, you have to pivot. I mean, honestly, pivot is the word of the day because you're constantly changing your direction when you're working on a project. And I think if, if anybody out there really wants to get into flipping a house, you need to be a Gumby and just flow with it because- <laughs> I'm, I'm a mortgage lender. I, piv I pivot every day. Every day. <laughs> if you don't Just, find what you're looking for with one lender, you pivot and you go to the next lender, yeah. right? Same, yeah. Yeah. Well, Pat and I also, we also banned the, the term crushing it this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no crushing it. Just, no uh, crushing it. No crushing it. You, but you have, to, you have to pivot and you have to always find another solution because if you're looking on, if you're looking at things with blinders on, you're not going to find a new solution, and there's always a solution. It's just going to be around the corner. What are the fallbacks if somebody does something they do and they do not get a permit? They get you know, they go to Home Depot and get this, you know, because you can get these sheds. Yeah, you, know, you get you can get some decent looking sheds that almost you can almost like oh, I could fit somebody in here or make a little room. I, mean, um, I, I don't think that would work because you'd need plumbing. Yeah. Um, you'd need probably a kitchen suite. You need a yeah. drain. So you like buying a shed and then hoping somebody's going to live in it probably won't work. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to, you actually have to build it so that it's livable. 
I'm just so so even if somebody builds one and it's livable and they didn't get a permit, it's still it livable. Yeah, buy no. Them later? No, I mean I think you if you if you made it so that it's livable and you have a family member that wants to live in it, you're not going to get into any trouble. Jackie, am I speaking out of turn here? Have you? No, no. I come across them all the time. And yeah. as long as, as, as long as it is made to look like the rest of the house, floors are level, it's conforming. Yeah. Um, I, I don't run into a lot of issues and I see a lot of appraisers actually will give a, not always a full credit for yeah. the square footage, but a decent, you know, credit for the square footage. I've even seen appraisers that have to call me and say, was this part of the original house? Because, you know, they'll see that there might be an addition room that was enclosed at one point. And, you know, the city flies over. I don't know if they still do this, but they used to. They used to fly over and then they would guesstimate your square footage based off the photos. Right. And that would just kind of roll into the tax records. And over time, I've seen where very nice flips have been done to where that's incorporated and it just kind of after time becomes part of the square footage of the house. Yeah. And once an appraiser counts it, you keep going with it. But sometimes on our end, it's just, if it, as long as they, I've always, you know, I've seen in the past, I haven't had this run into recently, but as long as it's done in a professional like manner, they'll, they'll, they'll give it some, you know, credence. I mean, you know, if you got wires here and that, you know, the, the floors are, yeah. I mean, if it looks professionally done, some appraisers will like say, you know what? We'll, we'll we'll give this some value, you know. Yeah, absolutely. The the I, biggest I, thing I see, the biggest thing I see is is it's conforming with the rest of the house. If it seems like it flows, yeah, then typically yeah. no problem. Yep. Yeah, I've seen some screened porches that they converted to an addition yeah. on the house, but they still kept the slope on the floor. Yeah. So you got yeah, a table yeah. in there that's sitting like this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us, and uh, Rahima, especially you, and giving us that insight and telling us what's going on out there. It's, uh, um, I think the viewers will really enjoy that, and hopefully we can have you back again. Hey, man, I'd love to come back again. And we'll, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch base. We'll get Ruby on here with us. She's Wonderful. She's buzzing down from Flagstaff, just kicking herself, so we'll make it oh, work yeah. next time. But yep, everybody, have a great sure. time, and thanks for being on the show. We'll talk to you soon. You got it. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.